Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis, and today I wanted to cover something that's going to be a little boring, um, but this is kind of just an introduction to um, some decisions that we're going to make for our space game, and this is really talking about projectiles and co collisions and all the considerations that we should make when building a system for projectiles and collisions. So let's move on to our first discussion and that is going to be about lasers versus projectile laser beams. And the first thing we're going to talk about is a true laser. A true laser is really just a line between an emitter and its target. And in reality, um, it is going to hit the target immediately, and that makes it just one solid line. Um, so in reality, uh, a laser is not moving, a laser is just there because in our perspective of things for the scope of a scene it's usually just going to be point A, point B and they're just connected by a line and you really aren't going to notice that there's any kind of travel so my personal take on that is that lasers are good for barriers and graphical effects so if you want to make like a laser fence um, or something that really isn't moving but you want it to look kind of cool um, lasers are good for that but they're not really good for shooting because they don't really look like they're shooting. They're just boom, point to point. Um, and some people may prefer that. If you do, if that if that helps the, the feel of your game, yes, absolutely, use a laser. Like if you have like a beam that you need to be connecting between two objects and it's not really like a weapon, but it's like, you know, a, a joint, um, kind of like with uh, like a, a gate or something like that, um, then it's good. Um, but also with a laser, they're very easy to program because it's really just a ray and once the or ray cast and once you get a hit on that uh, that's it that's you know the damage is done um, no real considerations about point A to B because it's straight line and it's immediate straight line um, so again not always exciting when used as a weapon because there's no real animation but there's good purposes for it um, and you know in Unity 3D when you want to make like a laser one of the easiest ways to do that is just using a line renderer um, and then using a ray cast for the physics of it. So, comparing a true laser to a projectile laser beam. A uh, projectile laser beam, uh, the travel, the speed of that can be highly variable. Um, you have an object usually, uh, or some sprite possibly. The speed can be highly variable. Uh, the path can be highly variable. You can have physics that affect it, whether it be like on a, a you know, being pulled by gravity um, or by other forces. Um, the time does, it does take time to hit the target and if you want to make it look good you should probably be able to display that to the player. The player should be able to see that this object is moving. It may be very fast uh, but there's lots of ways you can make it uh, appear uh, you know kind of cool I guess is, is a key takeaway from that. Um, and my personal take, they are good for using as weapons. If you want to um, have a projectile, we're going to make a laser beam. It's not a, it's not a laser. It's a, it's a laser beam, and it's a projectile. It shoots. Um, but they are so those are good for weapons. Um, and you have way more options though when you want to talk about using projectiles in general. So I'll just kind of keep referring to this as projectiles because that's what they are. Um, but there are so many different considerations. So let's move on to that next one then. So here are some implementation objects or options for projectile laser beams. And the first one is just physics. In Unity, you can have a game object with a rigid body, uh, and you can set its velocity once you instantiate it, or you can apply other forces, whether at an instantiation or as it's moving. Um, so you can apply gravity and you would need to be careful to use fixed update um, but you would just also apply colliders so once it collides it collides and um, but one of the things that you need to be really concerned with fixed update um, is you have a very fast moving object and very um, finite increments for fixed update so be careful with that there's one word of caution transform with colliders um, so in this case, what we're doing is we instantiate the object. We're not really applying forces. You, you can. You can you can calculate your own forces, but really you're just telling the object to move with a script. And then, so there's really no physics in how it moves. 
but there is physics in the fact that you still are going to have a collider and you will have a, a rigid body or a kinematic rigid body and when I say kinematic rigid body uh, what I mean by that is it's kind of like a freight train uh, the kinematic rigid body is something that just moves and affects the physics of other things but not many things affect it um, then there is transform with raycast and this is similar to transform with colliders but instead of using a collider to detect that there's a collision we're actually going to use a ray um, or raycast and this is good for many projectiles because it's a good mix of getting that animation with an object um, and then the simplicity of it. If you hit an object with the ray, uh, it may, you don't have to go through it. You can project the ray forward, and if the bullet is going to hit it within the next frame, then you know you've got a collision regardless. Whereas fixed update, it is possible for something to pass through an object because the update has the object in one position. It does its calculations, and then it passes through. And then lastly, you can do animations. And animations are good when you want to have a projectile that has a unique pattern. So let's say uh, you, you have some kind of complex motion. And you can combine them with colliders or raycast. But the motion you might use might be like a rocket that swirls around as it's moving, uh, things like that. And so to give you an example visually of what we're talking about with these things, just physics we have the collider, the static collider, or another rigid body collider, and we have our projectile, and a force is applied to the projectile, and it moves, and once it's a collision is detected, we can trigger some kind of script with that. Then there's a transform with colliders, so we have our other static collider, or another rigid body collider, and we have our projectile and instead of a force being applied we just have the script telling it move until it has a collision or until you destroy the object for other reasons. With a transform with raycast the we have our collider whether static or rigid body and we have our object that doesn't necessarily have to have like a collider on it it has a ray and the ray is projecting forward and basically that ray when we detect a hit is going to we can trigger things off of that hit and you might think well the ball is well ahead of the object and that's not necessarily going to be true we're detecting that within the next frame you, the, the projectile is going to collide uh, with this so it's not necessarily a bad thing that we know next frame regardless of, of where um, we are now when the frame is completed we have a collision and we might as well go ahead and trigger that script now so it's all about the timing of it you you don't want to have a raycast and way you know a mile away if your projectile is not going to reach it you want to have it out and forward in front of you a little bit so that you know with within the timing of your frames and the speed of your object you can detect that hit and predict that collision without being, you know, without passing through before you actually trigger your actions on that collision. And then lastly, there's animations. Uh, again, you have your collider, your other collider, and the projectile. And instead of a script or physics applying to it, you just apply an animation. And then it collides and triggers your script. Now, animations give you a lot of options. Um, but also there are some limitations to them too. They're going to be static. Um, they're not going to, you can script things to react to other things with transforms. Um, but you know, usually the, the limitations of animations you also have tr with transforms because you're kind of stating in advance what you want them to do. But animations may be kind of uh, you just have to make sure you watch out if you want to have a collider and you don't have a tag you might have animations that go outside and collide with your um, your ship for example let's say you shoot a rocket and it goes to the left and you've got like a wing to the left that could hit it and it wouldn't look natural so you have to just keep other things in consideration um, but there are good reasons to use animations uh, as well so then 
after you've considered you know what you want to do um, let's take a step back and say if you want to stick with the physics you still need to have some consideration of the physics and what you can do with them um, regardless of which way you go um, and so we'll talk about all of them even if they don't all apply for the method we choose and the, the, the first thing we want to talk about is colliders triggers and rigid body colliders determine when two objects touch and the intent of a collider is to prevent an overlap. When you are colliding, uh, you don't want the objects inside of each other. You want them to stop at their edge and report that they have touched or hit or whatever. Um, when you are having something move, um, you want to apply a rigid body to that. So anything that's physics-based that's going to be moving, you need a rigid body for. Because, for example, two colliders, you can make them move with a transform, but unless they have a rigid body they're considered they're considered a static collider and that means that unity kind of considers them like you would consider the ground or a building they're not really intended to move so you actually cannot make two static colliders collide they, they will not trigger collision when two static colliders go through each other there is no collision uh, they don't they don't program it to to set off that that alert or um, you know message that there's a collision so um, you do want to add a rigid body uh, to things that do move and you don't have to do it to things that don't move um, and then lastly there are triggers for detecting an overlap so opposed to preventing the overlap a trigger is let's say you want to walk through a door and say now you're in this area you can have a big box collider that's a trigger and if you're in that box you're allowed to be in it you're not prevented from you're not you know it's not necessarily bad to be in it it's, it's good and by saying that, we're saying let's trigger some kind of action when the player enters into this trigger collider. So those are the three things to consider with colliders, triggers, and rigid body. And then we want to add on to that kinematic. So there's such a thing as a kinematic rigid body, and it can physically influence other objects, but itself is not affected by the physics of other objects. And like I said earlier, this is the freight train, when it just you can tell it what to do via transform uh, translate or transform position and you're moving it but it's not necessarily affected by gravity it's not necessarily affected by other physics other things will hit it and they might bounce off but it's not going to move so like I said it's a freight train it can move it's on its rails but anything that's anything that hits it's going to bounce out of the way layers so in Unity, you can set up layers. Actually, there are layers already kind of pre-set up, but you can add more. And you can configure layers to interact with other layers or not interact with other layers. So if you put an object in one layer um, and you put another object in a different layer and you've configured them to not interact, then they're not going to collide or uh, set off triggers. And then lastly, there's tags. You can tag objects in with tags, really, it's all about being able to set the conditionals. You know, you can say, if there's a collision and it matches this tag, do this one action. If there's, you know, another tag, do this other action or ignore it. So um, it's, it's really just putting conditional statements along with uh, taking those actions. It's not going to prevent a collision if you have a different tag. It's just really giving you the option of what action to take depending on the tag. And it's a good way to group it because you could you know make exceptions in in other ways but tags are one one good way of grouping things without necessarily being a layer and lastly I wanted to talk about the collisions action matrix and this is on docs.unity3d.com and this tells you what kind of colliders can interact with other triggers or colliders and you can see here a rigid body collider can interact with a static collider, another rigid body, or kinematic rigid body collider. Um, but as you can see, a static collider will not trigger a collision with another static collider. They're not meant to. And also same thing with the trigger messages. Um, so this is something that I would always reference if you're using these and you want to see what what touches what, like what triggers a trigger <laughs> and what uh, what can cause a collision or two two objects can collide uh, and this is this is very helpful to have if you're new to unity and not familiar with these things so the personal preference for projectiles and you probably could have guessed 
what my preference is, but I'll just go ahead and say it. It's transform and raycast. And the pros of that is it can detect an upcoming hit. And it's relatively simple to implement. We are going to be troubleshooting all of our own code. So if there's something wrong with, if we don't understand something about Unity's physics, we might have to be troubleshooting the physics in other ways. But if there's something wrong with our raycast, we made it. We kind of know what we are dealing with and we can kind of guess what went wrong. Um, and then we're also uh, less dependent on physics timings. If you aren't uh, very good at, like, you know, if you're not very familiar with the, the timing of physics and how they work, um, you know, it's, it's, it can be frustrating at times when you are trying to work on something and then you realize, oh, I've got timings wrong or, um, you know, be very careful with fixed update. It's, it's important that you watch out what you're doing with that and don't get it confused with update. Um, because your rigid body needs to be working off of a fixed update because fixed update is applying the updates for Unity's physics, whereas update is only applying for the timing on your frame rates. So, and then the cons of transform and raycast is it's self-built. You would need to build your own physics calculations if you want to get complex with it um, for your collisions. Uh, it's also, you know, means that you have to, if you want better accuracy, you're going to have to program that yourself. Uh, so it's not to say, I, I'm not saying that Unity physics are bad at all. What I'm saying is, is they're, they're more complete. And if you want to have a very complete solution, you'll have to put a lot of work into it. So if you don't want to be putting a lot of work into a system that works well, um, you can try Unity physics, but just know when it fails you, you're going to have to work around that more as well. So just be aware if you're using Unity physics versus your own implementation with Raycast, um, there are cons to that uh, for both of those. Um, and then, you know, like again, as I said, collisions would need manual tweaking for forces being applied if applicable. So if you want to have a collision um, with forces caused by that collision, uh, you know, you'll have to be do doing some tweaking on that yourself, but that's not necessarily too difficult to add into it. Um, but just keep it in mind because the Unity Physics um, has a lot of calculations it does for you. It does a lot of heavy lifting. So, anyway, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.